In the last video, many of you asked how the circuit manages to transmit energy across space. Today, I'll show you exactly what's going on and at the bank a common misconception about what part of the setup really does the heavy lifting. Anyway, hello, welcome to my attic lab. I'm Flavio and yes, that's my real name. And for copyright reasons, I started using it and it will be how you'll know me from today. Anyway, here I'm going to explain more in detail some things regarding our transmitting circuit because it seems like there are some misunderstandings regarding this circuit and how it operates. So I decided to in analyze it a little more with you. Anyway, let's dive in. So, this is the setup we left last time we saw before from above. And as you can see, it's quite simple. We have a couple of small door knob capacitors connected to a high voltage source connected to a 20 turns coil through a spark gap. The schematic is the one you can observe here. Now we see the schematic too and the principle of working is the following. The transformer produces 10,000 volts 50 Hz AC output with uh, 230 volts 50 Hz as input. The signal basically charges the capacitor at 10,000 volts 50 times per second in one direction, then the other 50 ones in the opposite direction. Each time it happens, the voltage through the spark gap reaches the breaking point and the spark gap acts like a voltage controlled switch with current hysteresis. Told in simpler terms, the spark gap stays non-conductive until the voltage gets high enough. How, once it conducts, it suddenly becomes very conductive, letting the LC circuit oscillate freely for a brief moment. This means basically that the, every time it conducts, the circuit for a brief time transforms and turns from this into this. At this point, we have to first mention that the secondary of the transformer we used has a big inductance, much bigger compared to the 20 turns coil we built on purpose, so almost all the current will go through it and not the transformer. This means that the transformer can respond to the rapid high frequency oscillations, it effectively becomes an operating circuit at those open circuit at those frequencies letting the LC circuit ring on its own. This leads us to this further simplification. Now we just have to just consider the natural evolution of it and oh, it gets complicated fast if we dig deep enough. What? What was that? Well, those calculations show how much complex the oscillations can get, but we don't need all the math to grasp the main idea. Anyway, the point here is that this circuit is good for what? Also, if this layout looks familiar to you, there's a reason, and I'll give up 5 seconds to guess it. Well, that's right. This is just part of the classical basic schematic of the Spargap Tesla coil. Also, some of you maybe know that there are actually two main variants of this circuit, because this circuit can be done in this other way too. If you notice, the principle of working doesn't change drastically, because in this case too, we have, at each voltage peak, a brief burst of high frequencies when the spark gap conducts electric current. This experiment shows whether the spark, it's, the spark itself is doing the transmitting, or whether the coil's magnetic coupling is the real key. In the previous video, we discussed about the transmitter and a receiver setup, and at first glance, uh, could seem like the spark of the spark gap is the source of the wirelessly transmitted signal. Okay, but what about the coil? And also, what about the spark small size? Because it cannot be to, it cannot be able to power wirelessly alone easily a fluorescent light bulb at a distance of around 30 centimeters with nothing. Also, according to the theory, the majority of the energy in the circuit itself bounces between the coil and the capacitor, and the most efficient way to capture it is not by using a dipole antenna near the spark, but another coil, possibly tuned to the same resonant frequency of the circuit, 
through the addition of another capacitor. To demonstrate this, I'll show you what happens if I put the two coils at 19 degrees each other while keeping them relatively close and keeping the spark gap in the same relative position to the lamp in both cases. Nothing. Now let's see the experiment like in the old setup. Well, seems like the coil's relative position drastically changes the performance of it. In fact, coils transmit energy through magnetic coupling. When they're at 19 degrees, the magnetic fields don't overlap, so almost nothing transfers. When aligned, instead, their fields intersect much more efficiently, even if they're not physically close. But what really happens then? Well, the point here is that the two coils are not mutually coupled so much when they are at 19 degrees each other, while they, they are a little distant, but still on the same plane. They communicate with each other much more efficiently. Okay, I know, I shared a lot with you today, but I had to before we move on with the next video. See ya!